When you hop into a new, old, or dead fighting game, there are certain things that you expect. You hold left and right to walk, you hold up to jump, there's going to be a character who throws a lot of fireballs, someone who wants to be stuck to you like a tumor, and a character that's awful but nobody likes playing against because they're a grappler. These are what we call archetypes. Whilst the literal definition is a very typical example of a certain personal thing, in fighting games it more means the core mechanics or ideas that define a character. Whilst the interpretation of these ideas vary wildly from game to game, today I want to talk about how guilty games takes these archetypes and warps their perception to fit inside of an environment where everything's moving lightning quick. Why only Guilty Gear? Well, because I managed to convince a plethora of other fighting game content creators to talk about the archetypes in their game, so we can talk more about the game that I like. Are you playing Guilty Gear yet? Before we keep going, it's important that you know what the word Okizeme or Oki means. Basically, it's just the pressure that you apply to someone as they're waking up, often with the intent of the pressure becoming a mix-up. Alright, you got it? Let's keep going. So let's start with a character type that nobody likes, grapplers, because I just love I love contradicting myself within the first minute of my script, since I really like playing against Guilty Gear's staple grappler, Potemkin. While I don't think that Potemkin does anything particularly unique for the grappler archetype, I think it's more what he can't do that makes him interesting. Grapplers are typically supposed to be large lumbering tanks that don't have the greatest tools to get through long distance or even mid-range engagements. They have to work hard to get in and then put you in dangerous 50-50s by having grabs that do exceptional damage that can't be broken and have to be jumped, but generally they only have universal movement tools to get them to that position. What doesn't help is that they've normally got walk and dash speeds that make the elderly look like they're about to approach the sound barrier, which makes it so that they have to rely on consistent small movement or a committal movement tool to make it so that they can start endangering your space. Potemkin, however, took that to an extreme, having a walk speed that was probably motion captured by a snail. That's not how mocap works, but like, you get the point. And he's got a dash that, uh, oh, uh, Potemkin doesn't have a dash, uh, but he's got an air dash that, that oh. To account for this, instead of giving him tools that he didn't need like other games, they decided to give him tools that allow him to approach the problem but not deal with it outright. Getting fucked up by projectiles at full screen? Slap that bad boy back, and now you've got a projectile that'll eat every other projectile. Now you're allowed to walk behind it, and so you get some rewarded free ground, but you still have to deal with the fact that you've got doo-doo movement, and so the chances are your opponent's just gonna, you know, like, fucking walk away? Just want to approach? Well, here's a dash that's an attack and it has armor, but it only armors one hit, requires a charge input, and is very punishable on block. Don't want to be negative on block? Okay, well here's a cancel for it, but you're gonna be in recovery as you cancel, so you better have conditioned your opponent into blocking, otherwise prepare to get your ass beat. Want to air dash? That's fine, but much like the missile that your animation is based off of, expect to blow up when you land. Guilty Gear gave Potemkin all of the tools that you could have asked for, but monkey pawed all of them so that they all have downsides. This helps to solidify him into the archetype, since he still lumbers around with stiff movement, making him reliant on them close-up high-impact 50-50s. This makes him have to play into a very limited set of game plans, but this doesn't mean that he can't be effective or gets entirely shut down. After all, with the right reads, all of these downsides become non-existent, but since you have to make the right reads, it feels like you're always fighting for any advantage. Guilty Gear took all the read-focused, close-range guessing games of a grappler and applied it to Potemkin for the whole match, by making it so that he doesn't have access to standard movement tools which everyone else has, with a significantly higher damage output than most other characters. And whilst Potemkin benefits from the read-focused gameplay up close, everyone else benefits from it every distance prior to that point, unless you get hit by a counter hit 6H, in which case, you know, big sad. But this is a fairly mundane take on the archetype, relative relative to the rest of what GG has to offer. After all, Potemkin takes the already established ideas of what the archetype does without trying too much new. All he really does is take the established ideas of the archetype and turns it up to 11. I mean, he does have the unique air grab, which, uh, okay, well, fuck you. Uh, and he's got the dash with armor, which, uh, okay, well, fuck you too. Actually, like, double fuck you. You took it from Potemkin. But GG does really weird things with some of its archetypes. Like, take Shotos, for example. Now, what really defines a Shoto? Fireballs, DPs, and a decent mid-range game with three or less letters in the name? Okay, so here comes along Guilty Gear and it gives you two of them, but while one of them is considered an unga bunga slam on the fight stick and place high enough to go back to the chimp tribe happy, the other is considered an honest character that requires a, a very strong fundamentals. So what makes Sol this unga bunga brainless, jangle keys in front of your face for comedy character? Personally, I think that it's defined by the fact that he excels at a close range game with incredibly fast mid-screen moves that allow him to cancel into moves that eventually pull him into a close range game that either forces you into a 50-50 with wild throw, or puts you in a place where if you guess wrong, he repeats the pressure. This makes it so that he's a character that's able to apply rushdown off of most conversions, and without having to meet any specific requirements to start applying that pressure, most people perceive him as very dumb. Now is this true? Not really. I mean, yes, he can convert into 
a neutral on block move on mid screen buttons, but it's not hard to escape, especially if you've got some kind of space behind you to escape into. However, since Soul brings rush down and aggression to the shirt archetype that's sometimes seen as passive or jack of all tradesy, he's sometimes seen as dumb as fuck, even though this gorilla exists. But Kai has these exact same mid screen tools, but has significantly less ability to naturally apply pressure off of a mid screen on block situation. If he wants to get his pressure going, which he certainly fucking can, he needs to get a knockdown to start playing rush down, since his Okizemi is really good, but it requires a really lengthy setup beforehand. You can also fireball questionable game design and now you're pressed right against him. But since Kai either needs meter or has already knocked you down to completely break your will to hold a fight stick, he's seen as a more honest character. However, some of you might be quick to point out how both of these characters seem to bring potential rush down to the Shoto archetype, so surely they're just rush down characters. But that's not really true. After all, you've got other characters who are actual rush down characters like Chip. Rush down characters' goals are to stick to you as much as possible and never let you breathe. Chip also has a DP and a, a kind of projectile, it's more like a really big disjointed hitbox, but I mean like whatever, who specifically wants to lock you in place and put you in multiple mix-up situations that are dangerous to guess out of. How is this different from Sol and Kai? Well, uh, he gets to that situation in different ways? Like, he's gonna more actively push against you in neutral with three jumps and fast movements, put himself really close to you, but not stick to you the same way that Jam might. Yeah, but he still ends up doing the same thing as Sol and Kai, right? Just like, more frequently? Alright, well maybe this isn't the best example of showing how Chip plays differently from the Shoto-like characters. After all, Chip, as well as being a rushdown character, is also a glass cannon. But Guilty Gear does the glass cannon with what I would consider to be the right approach, not by making it so that he's low health and high damage, but instead low health and high mix up potential. This makes it so that he's frustrating to play against, not in that one of you gets more than two hits and somebody dies, but if you want to attempt to make a mindless exit out of pressure, you're basically gambling with your life bar. Technically these mix-ups aren't actually that hard to work around when you're at a higher level of play, but I play around here on the skill scale and about here on the good net play graph. In turn, there's a balance between how much potential confusion you have to be on the receiving end of and how much reward you receive for correctly breaking down the situation and taking back control off of his Okizemi and pressure situations. Alright, so far we've just so happened to talk about characters that want to eventually become rushdown characters with Okizeme, so how about we talk about the direct opposite character type with a Zona? You know, the one that keeps you out and never wants you within arm's reach, typically with projectiles, you know, I, I know you're watching a Leon Massey video, but the description's in the name, just wake up a little bit. A character like Venom is a perfect example of this type of character, with your multi-layered ball setups, long-range buttons, fantastic teleport mix-ups, delicious Okizeme that allows you to play in a brush. Hold on a second, this isn't right. Venom's a zona with projectiles that go at like multiple speeds and angles and given enough space they just start to work into themselves, huh? Alright, let's 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 come back to you later. How, how about we go on to someone else? Alright, so Bedman. Bedman's a weird character. He's not really a type that you see too often outside of anime games. He's a trap character, which means that he's got the specific intent of being a character that does moves to set up a portion of the screen with something in the game world that is either activated by itself or activated by the player. Think about like Carmine, Testament, uh, Carmine again, I'm sure BB has one, but I'm too lazy to find out. Anyway, Bedman has to do specials, and once he's done that special, a replay gets put either where the move started or ended, depending on the move. This allows Bedman to do moves like Task A, which make himself safe, and then use that to cover himself as he sets up more and more replays, which might not be safe without the hitbox to cover himself. Also, most combos end with a move that sets a trap, which allows Bedman to work towards a goal of setting up very hard to comprehend Okizemi that allows him to play Rushdown. Uh, something's not right here. Someone here doesn't just eventually want to play Rushdown, surely. Elfelt looks for Knockdown with effective mid-range tools and then uses Pine Berries and Shotgun Stance for Rushdown. Ramlethal uses mid-screen tools to fish for Knockdowns and then sets up Swords for Rushdown Oki. Faust pushes you out with fantastic long-range control which allows him to set up items. And uses them items to effectively repeat the situation whilst creating an unpredictable wall to get through since it's hard to figure out exactly what option or opportunities the next item might provide Faust or you with. Oh, thank god. See, Faust is a little bit hard to categorise. You could say that he's a Zona, but that doesn't really paint the right picture since whilst he's got traditionally understandable buttons, everything else is a little bit weird around him. He's what I generally call an unorthodox character since what he can do changes all the time and doesn't really fit within the standardised convention of fighting game characters. He's like the box of random shit that's under your bed, who really knows what you're gonna pull out? And while he's strange in many places, like his jump height, his pogo stance, his super that has your opponent make a choice inside of it, the one that you're probably immediately gonna notice is the item toss. It spawns a random item that can just do loads of different shit. Meter building items, hammers that act as an anti-air and cover the space in front of you, weights that force knockdown on anyone that's standing, bombs and meteors that allow for excellent 
space coverage. Many megafaust that crawl along the ground as active hitboxes, which makes for excellent approaching tools, and on knockdown allows you to suddenly switch into a rushdown character. God fucking damn it, is there anyone here who suddenly can't be a rushdown character? How is everyone this one archetype to some extent or another? It completely defeats the purpose of this whole video. You're rushdown, she's rushdown, I'm rushdown. Is everyone secretly unga bunga too? Quick, somebody grab some keys, jangle them in front of my face. I need to know if I think it's funny. We can't all be rushdown. That'd just defy the way that archetypes work. Unless Guilty Gear just has a really weird relationship with archetypes, because not everyone's going to be rushed down all of the time, but it's hard to find a character that's defined by any one playstyle between every matchup. After all, you're going to go from matchup to matchup and wildly change how you play between them. I'm not going to play Venom Potemkin the same way that I'm going to play Venom Dizzy. That'd just be fucking stupid. I wouldn't constantly rush down a Potemkin unless they were showing some kind of weakness that made it more effective for me to play rush down. I'd more likely zone them out until they show me that they know how to deal with keep out and then transition over to more aggressively focused strategies. But when I'm playing against Dizzy, come here you bitch, stop trying to set that shit up. And every character has this kind of flexibility to shift their game plan based on the matchup. And even though, yes, every character can play Rushdown with a clean enough advantage, because everyone's Oki is pretty good, it's more like every character exists on a radar chart, or whatever the fuck this thing is called, patriarchy, I don't care. And what they do well fluctuates to create a unique character. Most of what we normally see as archetypes are kind of on this graph thing. Is it a spectrogram? Is that what it's called? And so in order to really put any characters into one category, you'd need to generalize that character's attributes. Archetypes, as a character concept, should be seen more as the character's standout attribute rather than any definitive role that that character can play. Anyway, the video is called Archetypes in Rev 2, so we're about to shove some circles into some square holes, and I'm about to make some of you very angry. You ready? Let's go! He's a Shoto, he's a stance character, he's a gorilla, he's a Shoto, she's like a, a trap character, kind of? She's a bit weird. That's a rushdown, he's like long limbs, that's not really an archetype, but you kind of get what I mean. Uh, he's a snowball character, she's rushdown. Leo is a Korea. <laughs> he's a rushdown, she's a rushdown, she's a parry character, uh, that's a rushdown. Puppet character, grappler, uh, she's rushdown, that's a monkey. Venom a rushdown character, I guess. That's a zoner. She's a zoner. Faust just, he's just fucking weird, man. He's doing his own thing. He's a sleepy trap man. That's a rushdown character, and that's the League of Legends Nexus. Can't wait to see all of you in Strive when this video doesn't make any fucking sense anymore. Woo! This video was made alongside a bunch of other content creators and fighting game people, all talking about the archetypes in the games that they think are pretty neat. Down below, there's going to be a playlist to everyone's videos, and on the right, there's going to be a link to uh, somebody's video. I'm not sure who, because I'm having. I'm gonna reformat my hard drive so I have to render really fucking early. <laughs> I would appreciate if you could take the time and at least investigate the other fighting game people that are around, you know, to make videos and chat. What the fuck am I trying to say? I think what I'm trying to say is thank you very much for watching, and if you check them out, thank you very much for watching them as well. I, it's still in shambles. I'm just gonna go. Bye bye. Thank you very much.